David Brewster here with a new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Sticks, and I've had some requests to feature some of Sticks' music. Definitely a legendary band, and they're from my hometown. They're from Chicago, Illinois, and Sticks formed in 1972. And during their career, they released 17 studio albums, 9 live albums, 16 compilations, 39 singles. And, uh, what, 8 of those songs were top 10 hits. One of those songs was a number 1 hit in the U.S. and Canada, and that was Babe in 1979. And definitely Styx is, you know, still active, they still tour, and there's an interesting kind of history with the group, because the early years were noticeably different than everything that came after that, from around, you know, like the early 70s to about the mid-70s. Right around the time Tommy Shaw joined the band, that's when the group started to change a little bit, but definitely the early years of Styx were almost progressive rock, like blues rock progressive rock. Really cool stuff. Now, during those early years, uh, Styx had a six-string secret weapon in John Krilrowski. That was the original guitarist, and he played with the group from 1972 until 1975. And following the release of the album Equinox in 75, and he left, and that's when Tommy Shaw joined the band. And Styx's music noticeably changed after Tommy Shaw joined. And James Young has actually been the only consistent member in the band Styx since the very beginning. He's been through every incarnation and reformation of this group. But definitely in the early years with John Kurowski or JC, I guess was his nickname. Very interesting and overlooked guitarist. So rest in peace, John. So the music and chord-based examples in this episode came from four sticks related albums. And we're going to basically just attack those early years, like I was talking about earlier. No offense to Tommy Shaw, definitely a legendary you know, guitarist and singer and you know member of Styx. But uh, those early years are commonly overlooked, and it's kind of misunderstood. Most people just assume that's Tommy Shaw, and it's like, no, that's John Kurowski. And I uh, was tempted to kind of dive, you know, deeper and kind of hit some more recent, you know, Styx music. But there's just something magical and special about those first five albums with JC. So anyway, here we go. So with the opening, that's Best Thing from the first Sticks album. And actually this first part's an acoustic guitar, that kind of quieter riff, this part. You like that? And this like index finger bar into another bar chord, it's kind of a signature move in this early output from Sticks. So you'll see this. That seventh fret bar, and we're in the key of E here. You could think of that as an E7, uh, sus2, sus4. Because we're adding that F sharp and that A note to that E7, you know, chord. And then that's just going to move into E major, like that. Right there, play a G major bar chord, but don't bar it. Play the B in the high E open and kind of pick, and like it's like half strum, half picked. And then go up to A and do the same thing. And that's the end of the acoustic part after that. And that's where it explodes right here. Like an E minor blues riff right there. Rock out variation of the acoustic intro, this part. And then he starts doing, and like I think the guitar and the bass and everybody's doing that. And then just do power chord hits here two G's, two A's, and then go back to that single note riff. that again. Next up is the song Young Man. This came from the album The Serpent is Rising and this is also played on acoustic guitar and you're going to notice a similarity between this and what we open with, the best thing. But it's something like this. You know, something like 
like that. And keep in mind, this is technically an acoustic guitar. I'm just playing it on electric. And once again, we have that same E7, uh, Sus2, Sus4 chord. But now we're moving into E minor instead of E major. And we're doing a hammer on into that chord. Like that. And then it's A major a couple times. And then it's just the open strings, all the open strings. And that's technically like an E minor 11, if you think of that as a chord. Like that. So it's... great on electric guitar but it sounds really good on acoustic too. Next up is the song Witch Wolf. This also came from the album The Serpent is Rising and it's the simple riff but it just rocks out like this classic 70s kind of rock out riff like this. <laughs> something like that. So we're in A and we're just basically kind of thumping off that A power chord but also grabbing that C occasionally. And then after you bounce off that C again, move over to a D power chord like D over A like that. Go back to that A riff. And then you're going to basically let that A ring for a second and then cruise down using open strings. And it's kind of played fast in there. And do it again. Right here, you're gonna basically exaggerate that C to A and then end with G to A. Cool song, Witch Wolf. Now, speaking of rock out sticks riffs from the 70s, this is I'm gonna make you feel it from Sticks 2, which is on the wall up there. And after the extended intro, they start rocking out like this. <laughs> So it's brutal low E open, and then two E5s right there, move that to D, and then move that to A. So it's a real simple riff. Then you start doing, and you loop all that again. Rock riffs don't have to be hard to play for them to completely rock your face. And you have to admit, that's a rockin' riff. All right, next up's the song You Better Ask. This is also from Styx 2. And this is honestly one of my favorite Styx songs. I completely overlooked. You never hear this on the radio. Cool, like, swampy funk groove and cool vocal harmonies and stuff. Cool tune. But uh, something like this. <laughs> So we're basically doing a 1, 4, 5, and A, A, D, and E, right? And we're also playing with this kind of boogie blues, you know, that like A5 to A6. But instead of doing that, they're basically doing this kind of shift slide into the chord and then that slow kind of swampy funk kind of groove. Right, so A flat into A, or A flat 5 into A5, and then you're playing with that A6. Kind of scratch and snip in there. 
then do the same thing in D, like move from D flat five into D five. <laughs> And kind of play with that D5, D6 action right there. And then do the same thing to E. E flat 5 into E5 and play with that E6. Right there, go back into A, that A flat into A. And after that A section, you're going to go into the Hendrix chord right there. E7 sharp 9. And do all that again. Next up to the song Light Up, this is the opening track from the album Equinox. And this was also the last album with John Kowalski, even though I think Tommy Shaw stepped in and toured that album, but the guitars were all James Young and John Kowalski. And this guitar part kind of mimics the rhythm of the vocal melody, like this. <laughs> like that really interesting it's played off of that open d string and it starts with that little partial d major and then it's a d6 sus4 implied and then you're going to move back like that and that's an implied d uh, sus2 sus4 like that and you can also think of that as part of c over d like that and then you hear this uh, and that's like a d7 sus2 implied to d major starts again and it's the same chord just a different rhythm obviously right there and you can do that same little and you just loop that over and over that riff it eventually just goes to like a g5 power chord but that's an interesting gu guitar part i like the chords those partial chords also mimicking the vocal melody cool riff last but not least we have sections from the song lorelei this is also from the album equinox and once again we have these partial chords played off an open d string like this <laughs> So we're basically starting with these partial chords here, like I said, off the open D, and it's that partial D major, and also that partial D7 sus2 implied, and also that D6 uh, sus4 we had in the previous example right here. And you can hear like the chords are separate, then there's a pull off between those two partial chords right there. And that's where you move up to that D6 sus4 implied. Play the open D. And then you're going to basically stay between these chords uh, with a little different rhythm. Like that. And do all that again. And then head down here to the 
this A power chord. That G5 right there. Do that again. And then it's the chorus right here. And it's a D5 and then also that fifth fret bar. Really similar to what we had at the beginning of this lesson in E. But now we're in D, so a D5 and then a partial like D7 sus4. And then an A to a G5 twice. on that A5. Definitely a cool song and kind of overlooked from Styx. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with this look at the chords of Styx. Definitely a very important and influential band, and they've been on the scene for a very long time. And definitely Come Sail Away has forever been ruined for me thanks to South Park and Cartman's version of that song. I can't help but think of South Park when I hear that song. But definitely if you dig around in their early years and their music from the 70s, there's lots of great stuff. And no offense, like I mentioned earlier, no offense to Tommy Shaw. He's definitely a legendary musician and guitarist and performer, songwriter and singer. But uh, I definitely got stuck on those early years of this band that's commonly overlooked, kind of commonly misunderstood. And they were kind of a different band. And I think it's interesting when you notice groups that change. You know, some groups, they kind of stay, you know, really similar to where they started. Think of bands like ZZ Top or something like that. But then you notice these bands that drastically change. Think of Fleetwood Mac. You know, like the Peter Green era of Fleetwood Mac is drastically different than the Buckingham Knicks version, you know, that came later. Or uh, there's lots of examples of this. You can think of other prog rock bands like Yes and Rush and, uh, you know, groups like Kansas and Gentle Giant and Camel and even Goblin, you know, where they change from their progressive rock roots. And then they started to kind of steer more toward like a, you know, pop kind of... Uh, popular music sound, attempting to get hit singles or maybe videos on MTV or something. And that was, I think, definitely from the record label kind of pushing them like, hey, you guys need a hit. And I'm not sure if that's what happened with Sticks. Of course, they had member changes and stuff and Tommy Shaw jumped in. So that might have, you know, helped them kind of move in a different direction. But definitely don't overlook that early Sticks stuff. It's really cool. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.